The time is now to architect a life of excellence. What will we do? Who will we become? We decide today. This is Learn, Do, Become Radio with April and Eric Perry. Let's move onward and upward together. Hello and welcome to episode 50 of Hooray! Learn, Do, so Become exciting. Radio. Huzzah! <laughs> episode 50! I'm April Perry, here with my husband, Eric. Hello, we are so excited to have you with us today in this podcast. And our daughter, Aaliyah. Hello, we have lots of fun energy today, so it's going to be a fun one. <laughs> Aaliyah is our 19-year-old. She's actually in her first year of college, but she's home today. And we thought, you know what, this is such a great time to record a podcast. Because, you know, every time you get together with your parents, don't you want to go sit down and record, all I dream about, record something? I'm sitting in college all week long, and all I can think about <laughs> is the next podcast I'm coming home to record. Today, though, we're talking about becoming a responsible adult. Some people use the phrase adulting. That was a, a verb that really wasn't used An years ago. An action verb that's awesome <laughs> and somehow has come into our modern usage. But whether you are a full-blown adult who just wants to handle things more effectively and have a little less stress, or whether you are a young adult or a teenager or someone who's like, ah, I'm ready to jump into this world. It's getting started with adulting. <laughs> then Aliyah's going to share just a couple of things from her own experience. And we're going to talk about how you actually do make this transition to go from being a child who's mostly dependent on your family to now making big decisions and being totally responsible for yourself and being able to manage all the details that are involved in being an adult. So, okay, Aaliyah's just going to share a little bit about her Step Win. Now, Step is our program, Steps to Everyday Productivity. We have a Facebook group, and she posted this in the group the other day. And when I read it, I just felt so excited because, number one, I'm really happy. Number one, these kinds of things really excited. <laughs> well, but number two, I wish I could have written something like that when I was her age. And I wasn't quite to that level and not trying to say like Leah's perfect or anything like that because I know she's she's not trying to come on here like that but I really feel like this is just a good example for me for all of us and a really down-to-earth way to show life doesn't have to feel stressful well just a quick side comment on that I think we actually have gotten a lot of great comments in our community and through learn to become from people from all walks of life and stages of life about that need to want to learn certain skills and abilities to help be able to adult better yeah and that may be if you're in your 20s looking to make that transition or your 40s or your 60s. And we talk about in our class quite a bit that we teach that a lot of times we came out of our early uh, educational experiences, middle school and high school, our family situations, not necessarily having learned a lot of these skills. And so when you're asked to go yeah. face the big, bold world um, on your own and try to figure out how to do that, it becomes it feels challenging. And so we just encourage people to realize that these abilities could be learned at any stage or age of life. And once you have them, they do make a huge difference. And then it's so much fun. Life is so much more fun so when you learn how to adult fun. with life skills. Okay, take it away, Aaliyah. All right. So, I mean, here at college, I have a ton of huge projects. And I think in high school, especially, these things would have stressed me out and they would have kind of paralyzed me. I wouldn't have moved forward because it just seemed too big to tackle. But in college, that's basically every project, so I had to kind of figure out how I was going to approach them. So I started breaking down my projects into next actions, and these are just the smallest things that you can do just to keep moving your project forward. Anything you want to add on next action? <laughs> no, no, that's great. Okay, so I really want to do a study abroad through my college, but I'm going to be spending the next 18 months in Ukraine for a church service mission, so I won't have a lot of time or ability to be on the computer and applying for the study abroad because it's not till 2021, and that's, you know, two years away. So I needed to figure out how I was going to apply to this program in two years, how I was going to ensure my spot and make sure everything was taken care of, and I kind of broke this down from a big project. Do you want to share any more details about yes, it? Yes, <laughs> Because okay. um, I love how you were so specific mm -hmm. in what you explained that you did. Just maybe these little steps that you outlined. Yeah. So, I mean, the first thing was, I think my very first next action months ago was to email the person in charge of the study abroad and say, is this a possibility? Can I apply in advance? Or can my parents help me apply because I won't be able to? And they didn't get back to me because, I don't know, they must, they must have some crazy amount of emails or something. But I didn't get a response back, and it's been about six months 
after the fact. So I ha went into the office. My another next action was to actually make a physical trip to their office because they have very limited office hours. So I made, I scheduled it on my calendar. I went into the office and I had all my questions ready for the lady in charge and she was able to answer everything for me. So my, and then I created a bunch of current projects and next actions after meeting with her to help me move the project forward even more. So was it a bunch of current projects or just a single current project? This is your project. The sub projects. Sub projects. Sub -projects yeah, yeah. And then some actions under each mm -hmm. of those, right? Because the majority of them have, you know, they're ongoing projects, so they're current in the sense that I need to start working on them now. But if mm -hmm. I don't finish them right away, it's not a huge deal. So what types of things did you need to do? So after I mean, that the first. So the, my first current project was to complete my application essays in advance, and this is something I need to finish okay. within the next month or so, just because I won't have a lot of time to be writing essays and over yeah. the next year and a half so I need to make sure those are all finished so instead of just being like oh no I'll just get to that eventually it's actually a project on my list so I'll sit down write my essays couple drafts make them really good um, and the next one was to make a next action to sit down with my parents and explain the whole process to them to figure out how they were going to be involved and how they were going to take the next steps for me while I'm gone because... We'll need access to your essays. You'll need access, access to my <laughs> account. To access to, you'll, need, you'll need to go in to meet with the person maybe in the office. Like There's a lot of different steps regarding your new roles if you want to yeah. help me with this. And you're not just going to hand it over to us and say, hey, go make this happen. Yeah. You're going to say, this is all the information. Here's the dates. Mm -hmm. Here's all the setup. And that adds on to the next thing, my next other action is to create the calendar triggers to remind not only me, but my parents about these upcoming dates and deadlines. Because, you know, in over a year from now, when they have to submit the essays and everything, they might not know about it if it's not clearly yeah, on their calendar. Sense, it'll just pop up on our calendar as a mm -hmm. reminder, hey, this week, you need to make sure yeah. you send this, this material. Or maybe this even person. a little bit more in advance saying, hey, yeah. just be prepared. This is coming up. If you have any questions, now is the perfect time to go and talk to the people in the office and figure that out. Um, and I was also given some pamphlets and, you know, the business card of the person in charge and kind of all these papers and things and I need to put those in my either my mom's tickler or Sunday file where she'll be able to easily find these so on the calendar I'll say oh and by the way everything you need is right in your folder for you and she's really smart she said put this in my mom's tickler or Sunday folder she yeah. didn't put her dad's for some reason because well she knows I figured that, that mom like... mom kind of has a lot of the household stuff and a lot of the kids stuff in her folders and because so. mom's far more reliable well or you could help me just create a file folder and put mm -hmm. it in my filing cabinet yeah. but you would create the trigger. Yeah, it's, really, it's Mom, really just go wherever here. you want it to be. Go here, yeah. here are the materials you'll need on this date, go. Mm -hmm. And then I had another next action to discuss where that was going to be with her. So I just didn't say, here's a random yeah. folder <laughs> you have to keep track of. And then finally, I'm creating a shared Evernote note. Um, and that's going to have all like the application links, the PDFs of the applications, contact information for the people in charge, just everything digital. And all, there's a lot of websites involved and a lot of you know downloads that we have to complete and finish and submit. So if I have all those in one place, you can't miss it. Can you just read this last paragraph? Yes. <laughs> so I wrote, I'm so grateful for Step because not only has it helped me see the large, daunting projects as simple steps and next actions, but it allows me to have full confidence that my parents will be able to help me with and won't forget about these key steps that I won't be able to do on my own. For, parent, for any parents out there, your children are also so thankful for Step because they know for sure that they can count on you. No more lost papers or forgotten projects. <laughs> and so, that not that fun? <laughs> well, it is fun because I wasn't always like this. I yeah. used to have papers that were all over. Eric and I just had stacks, yeah. and I had piles, and on my desk it was piles. And I remember yeah. like, on the fridge you'd like put like someone's field trip thing or like a coupon on the fridge, and I remember yeah. seeing things all over the fridge. Stacks and, and stacks on stacks on stacks. Yeah, and, and then Eric chaos, would go to work, and, and I would say, I'm so tired of these piles. So I would move them into the bedroom or something next to his bed, and he'd come home and say, where's that pile that was right here on the counter? <laughs> well, uh, I don't know. I was so mad at all the piles. I well, and a quick, a quick side story. Actually, I ran into someone who lives close to us now who actually is in the Step Mastery program. She pulled me inside and said, I built my command central. Oh, it's done. Really? Like the whole thing's built and my front room and my kitchen are partially decluttered already. Oh. And, she, and she actually said, we, this week we actually had an event where we had a bunch of family over. And I said, well, would you have not done that? She's like, no, I still would have done that, but I would have moved all the piles from the front room into the bed <laughs> yeah. on the bed. I'm like, 
I so remember that. And then when you move the pile back, the piles weren't where they used to be. And you can't find the documents you once had in the place you thought they were. And she's like, it is awesome. Oh, my gosh. So I love hearing exciting. that. And the thing is, that's how I grew up, too, is that my mom had this dresser. We'd put everything on the dresser. And then you'd never find anything. And if I thought, I have to leave these papers for my mom to for find, my in, mom two to find in two years. There's, there's no way. Yeah. I just And it wasn't because my mom didn't want to help. It's that, that would have stressed her out to yeah. try to remember that. Or she would have had to like keep them in her hands, like not. <laughs> for we should years. refer to it as the dresser of disappearing documents. It truly was. And then there was even a woman who was at one of our in-person events, and she said, when my daughter comes home from school and she needs me to sign something, she won't let go of the paper she yeah. needs signed. She holds on to it, I sign it, and then she puts it in her backpack because she knows if she lets go of it, that's we'll it. will never <laughs> okay. see it again. So, so part of it is having that trust with mm-hmm. one another. But the part I want to focus more on is how you were able to actually – take ownership of this and not feel stressed because when you're saying oh i need to write these essays next month or so you're also doing finals right now Mm -hmm. and you have a and you're packing for ukraine yep and you're traveling to visit some friends because you're gonna be gone for 18 months i mean you have a lot going on (laughs) and you're volunteering with see i wasn't stressed out about it until you're like making it sound like more than it is (laughs) sorry good job stress initiator but you're but you don't need to be stressed you're not stressed because you have it in order so for example right now you've got a test today i know you're going to take Mm -hmm. one this afternoon you've got some final projects and things because school's finishing up very Mm -hmm. shortly but you just then put this project to get these essays just below your school projects right Mm -hmm. you're not prioritizing them today because you have yeah because i mean our finals it's really nice because they're open for like five or six days we can take them whenever we want and because i have step and i'm making sure i have my calendar really well laid out i can schedule all my midterms and my studying in advance and then i can finish the tests you know early and be done with it in advance and then have more time for these projects because if i was just like running around not sure what i'm doing like several of the people that i know in college are just oh i have a test Uh oh it's the last day of finals i better go run and take it before it closes yeah. Yeah. and they don't end up getting the score they want and... well and i think the thing that goes along with that the procrastination the benefits of being able to be organized and break things out like this a it reduces your stress right the mm-hmm. worry and the anxiety you have but there are also some huge benefits that come from that i think your academic performance for example as a student if you know when those tests are coming you prepare and you're not stressed out and rushing last day you're doing it sometime in the beginning or middle that definitely would help academics will help professionally but just a quick side of comment on Aliyah's study abroad she actually told me that when the applications are due in a year from now and we're going to submit the her materials for her she said there's a window. It's based on a lottery, right? So they can take a certain number of students. Yeah, and this this study abroad is known for having people be turned away because everybody yeah, wants to go to it. It's a very, very it. desirable it's, study abroad. It's a really like, fun one with a lot of cool experiences, but a lot of people get turned away because too many people apply and don't get in. Right, and so this, this woman who's the administrator of the study abroad program, she actually said, okay, we have this week long window when people submit their applications, and if they can get them in by then, they are assured of a place in the program. Yeah, it's like a pre-registration window that hardly anyone's ready for right nobody's ready for it nobody's planned for it so if you if you were able to get your application in then you're going right and then anything after that point in time everyone else becomes part of the lottery to fill the remaining spaces and Aaliyah's like I mean a I don't know if that's widely communicated well on the website or wherever yeah. it is Aaliyah making that visit having that conversation finds that information out so now she knows about it mm-hmm. but because of this approach that she takes she's she won't she's, miss it. she's absolutely going to have her application on yeah. day one or day two of that pre-window week mm-hmm. and so that means she can guarantee herself a slot just by being a little bit organized and a yeah. little bit on task because a lot of the people I've talked to were scrambling to get their application in last minute and it was really hard for them to even and get everything you know notarized and get their passports figured out and everything yeah. and because there's a lot of steps that go into it especially if you're you know, a first-time passport holder or anything like that but because of you know the tools of step there's no need to like procrastinate or freak out because everything's really streamlined and simple adulting adulting now the thing is obviously we're all very excited about this <laughs> this is something that Aliyah and i particularly love Eric and I teach these step principles all the time, maybe multiple times a week to hundreds and hundreds of people in every class, which is awesome. I want to be careful as we're sharing this. I don't want it to sound like, hey, look at this perfect organized family who does everything just right. Are no, we come awesome? see my office today. It's not quite organized. <laughs> Eric's got a lot going on in his office. And also, I want to share kind of a little bit where I was when I was Aaliyah's age, just so mm-hmm. that you can have a little more perspective. The other thing, too, is that I think our excitement isn't because we're trying to say, oh, look how awesome we are. It's more like, hey, did you know that there's actual 
there's actual step-by-step instructions to create a system so anyone can do this. It's not like it's really hard. Well, and it goes back to something we talked about. We had a team meeting with our great team this morning, and we were just talking about how do we help better convey what it is we are trying to teach and share in the world. And someone says, you know, one of the great things that STEP does is it teaches people how to organize their minds so that they can then go and know how to organize their stuff, right? The physical, the mental, the digital. So once your mind has kind of this process or these steps that's approach, it's very easy then to go forward. And we'll also teach on how to do the actual stuff organization as well. But it really stems from a foundation of having your mind really organized and clear on how you want to go forward. And I think this is such an important time to talk about this because it's not just adults who are feeling overwhelmed right now. It's a lot of our teenagers or children. And I mean, where Leah is right now with with a student who's going to college and making really big decisions for the rest of her life, <laughs> like impact her whole life. Well, you see the studies it's that really come important. back and talk about how the levels of anxiety and yeah. like procrastination depression. and depression are increasing wildly. Like, like that is really like sad college and really counselors scary. counselors can't even handle it at well, this point. And they say the backlog on college counselors, for example, is like two to three to four months. And that could be far too long and far too late for some of these young adults or youth who yeah. are just struggling. So, you know, the ability to help develop these skills in ourselves and teach them to our children and grandchildren, it's really important because we want them to have a, a more streamlined and a more quality uh, quality of life that maybe they don't otherwise enjoy because so much feels like it's coming at them. Well, and because Aaliyah has been living on campus and you've been around a lot of other students, you've noticed that there's a lot of students who just would like watch Netflix or mm-hmm. hang out on social media, not because they don't care about college, but because they're just feeling so overwhelmed. Yeah. Or I mean, after, you know, a day of three to four classes, they're just burnt out. And by the end of the day, the last thing they want to do is think about the next steps for their projects and yeah. how the heck they're going to write three essays by the end of next week. Like all they want to do is just kind of sit, watch Netflix, hang out. Like, and not that that's bad to have downtime and to right. rest or something, but I think it's a lot of just... But the stress stre- isn't going away. Yeah. It's the stress just, just like increasing. kind of paralyzes them and they just, yeah. they'd rather just sit and do something that's just... And I remember. Fun. Yeah. I totally remember that. And I had a planner when I was in college and I I loved planning and organizing, but I was very stressed out and I didn't know how to be an adult yet. I had a scholarship to college. I had a couple different scholarships that covered most of my expenses for books and all that. And my parents helped to pay for my apartment and my food. But I remember a conversation that Eric and I had because we'd been dating for a while and we decided that we were going to be getting married. And I was so excited. I was thinking about getting married and our wedding and what my dress is going to look like. And I was just dreaming of just this wonderful time being married. And then Eric sat down with me in the kitchen of my apartment one day and he said, okay, so we need to start talking about finances. And I remember I was like, wait, finances? Why, why don't you talk about finances? <laughs> And Eric's like, okay, let's talk a little bit about what we're going to be doing. Because Eric also was on a scholarship and he was doing some student government service. So that wasn't paid. It was like scholarship, but it wasn't paid. And so he was busy and he's like, all right. I mean, he was earning enough money on a side business that he had to pay for his apartment and his food and his car. But now we were getting a bigger apartment and having a wife and our other insurance and potentially a baby coming, you know, in the future. And, and so we said, okay, well, we should probably look at you getting a job. Why are you laughing? <laughs> we and I are just kind of wondering at this little, the, the vignette of how this all went down. So it just, yeah, we just had this conversation because yeah, when you become married and your life starts to expand, there are additional costs and things you need to think about. And I guess I really remember this conversation as well as I think April does, but I think it definitely is that kind of eye-opening realization that, okay, well, how are we going to do this, right? And so we talked about a few options. We looked at the scholarship that she had, and I think I had a couple for academic and leadership. And, you know, like, yeah, and a little side business. So this is our income, but then the time that we're spending in school or the things that we're doing, you know, what else is needed, right? And so we talked about the possibilities of maybe taking out a couple of small student loans to supplement until we were finished with school. We were nearly done, about a year away. Or possibly working as well to kind of defray that. And so we just had that conversation. Okay, but when you sat down with me and you spelled out how much money we were going to need for an apartment, for money, uh, for our food, and we just went through the expenses, and I looked at that, I panicked. 
I had never even because you apparently had never done this before. I had never you done never it, and I no, I had <laughs> never done a budget. And I know this is so embarrassing, but my mom and dad were like, each of you listening can still trust her to be a guide in your organization and productivity skills, even I'm though like, she's not. The, I'm not the a big spender. Budgeter. Well, here's the thing: I wasn't always a big spender. I was, the, you know, youngest of a lot of the children in my family, and my parents. I don't know if they talked to any of us about it, but they just it wasn't even a discussion. And my mom had just said, "You have a scholarship to college. I want to help pay for your food and housing, so you can." focus on your studies. And I was getting straight A's in college and I was very, you know, I was doing a good job, but I had never really budgeted. I just knew I had this much money for groceries and I stayed within that. Right. So we had two different cultures coming so together I was very because careful. I didn't come from that. And so I was having to kind of figure out how to do it on my own Yeah, and had a great, fa- had great, you know, fam parents growing up and they wanted to support, but, you know, it became something that I had to become more independent. Maybe that's where the adulting so difference So I happened. was terrified, and you – I remember I think I broke down. I was like, I don't know how to get a job. I was – I mean, I worked at Disneyland, but they paid me nothing. And I'm looking at these bills. Like, I'm nowhere near Disneyland. I don't know. I, I can't get back to the place that didn't pay me enough only, so that I can work and make more. only marketable skills are directing me. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I didn't even know what to do. I can direct large crowds in large situations. Not that there's anything wrong with that. That's an awful job. I loved my job at Disneyland. Yeah. Okay, so I'm not trying to sound like I was completely ditzy. I just hadn't prepared to adult. No. Okay, so Eric, though, sat, just sat down with me, and he just looked at – we looked at the budget together. So we need to earn about this much per month. And if we got a student loan for this much, that would be reasonable. You could work, like, 20 hours a week, just like I'm working, and we could make this happen. So I went and found – And the tears subsided. <laughs> the tears subsided. I was like, all right, I could do a job. <laughs> So then Aaliyah's looking at me like I'm insane. But Eric and I sat down. We waited till after we were moved into our apartment, after we were married and everything. And then I started doing my job search. Anyway, I was able to work at Franklin Covey talking to people about planners, which was the So she got a job, job at a great company with the products and resources she already knew and was very in it love with. It was right down the street. I was so happy. And I was able to work there until we had Aaliyah and everything worked out fine. So anyway... I just am so, so grateful to see Aaliyah and what she's doing now and how she's already paying for her college. She's paying for her housing. She's preparing and saving up so she can pay for the study abroad. But I want to add that, like, like that. Yeah, it's, you're painting this picture like I just got everything figured out. I mean, the test I have today, it's not like I'm super excited about finance. And I love my <laughs> test. Like, not that, I mean, and also part of step is learning how to overcome the procrastination of like not wanting to study for a test that you're not like excited yeah, about. Yeah, things that are Because this test is like, mm, I'm not super excited. Finals are starting. So it's not like maybe I could be a little bit more prepared for this test. So I'll be <laughs> studying a little bit more after this podcast. Which but... I think people feel comforted in knowing that not everyone has everything figured out. Mm-hmm. And so I think that's what just one of the main messages that I want to share here is that there are some really simple things that each of us can do. Like Aaliyah created a current projects list. Yeah. Anyone can do that. What are my projects? And you put them in order of by priority, yeah. right? And she made a next actions list. She knows what errands she needs to run and what phone calls she needs to make. She's got her calendar set up so she can trust it, a tickler. I mean, just some basic stuff. And we teach all of these in the STEP program. And Aaliyah has her STEP for Students program. So we'll talk more about those links and where you can find all that. But I think that when you can realize that you as a teenager, a young adult, a parent, a grandparent – there are tools that can just take the stress off. And then, sure, you might not want to do something, and you might not be super excited about something, just like everybody. <laughs> you know, this is, this That's life. <laughs> Eric loves taxes, for example. I love tax season. <laughs> and I loved washing windows in college. Right? I mean, it was meaningful work. That was one of the ways we pro- – I mean, but, yeah, you're figuring out how do I prioritize my work schedule, my school schedule, other things that need to get done, time with our family and the people who, who matter to us. But it's like we were trying to help be able to share some of these principles so that people really can organize their lives – And yes, all of us have to do some of the mundane and some of the less desirable, but figuring out how to stack that in so that it gets done on time, you know, and well, but still leaves us space and margin in our lives to focus on the things that we value most. We are working on a 25,000 step command central challenge. I cannot wait. We've already started receiving photos. People are sending them in and we need, we're going to get all that organized. But Aaliyah also, her program step for students teaches students how to build a command central. Those count. If you have a student building a student command central, that can totally count for 25,000. So let's just give a few links where people can go to learn more. First of all, all the links of everything we talk about will be on this episode show notes page. So if you just go to learndobecome.com forward slash episode five zero, so episode 50. Episode 50, huzzah! If you have not yet taken the free class that Eric and I teach, learndobecome.com forward slash step 
We have live classes going on. You can chat with us, interact with us, tell us about your college job. Yeah. <laughs> we'll teach these, we were teaching these four steps to really show you how to break down and identify some very simple current projects to focus on and get done during a month, how to break those down into next actions, and a context list to put the, each next action on to work it through very easily. And then, Aaliyah, if they want to learn more about Step for Students... Yeah, I have a great free download that teaches how to use these simple file folders to keep track of papers that you won't need for several months in the future, like we talked about in this class. So you can find that free download at learndobecome.com forward slash students. And it's a super, it's like a five minute video. And your you, kids can watch it kids with can you. kids can watch it with you. Or and you can, might just like yeah, it. <laughs> and you can apply it in your life in two minutes. All you need is like three to 12 file folders, whatever fits best for you. Because we all and, have papers mm-hmm. or even digital digital files, you can do a digital yeah. folder yeah, system. Like one of your yeah. children's ACT tests is coming up in May, or your vehicle registration came in the mail, but it's not due till July. Yeah. How, yeah. To, how to organize those things so they don't get lost. You'll know exactly where they are mm-hmm. when you need them. And in the video, I go through really specific examples for students and teenagers that they'll be, you know, having in their lives, you know, at any point in time. So it's really applicable to their lives, and I think it can be really helpful. Awesome. So that's learndobecome.com forward slash students with an S at the end. Okay. (laughs) Awesome. We would love for you to be able to check out the resources that we have for you. Explore the podcast. This is episode 50, which we're so excited about, but you are welcome to come explore the website. Tons of great resources for you and more inside the programs. So excited. Aliyah is going to be off in Ukraine soon, so our time recording with her and being with her is short, but we're enjoying it while we have it. Okay, anything else you want to add, Eric? I was going to say, we really enjoyed being with you today. Hope this has been helpful, a little bit of story time. Hopefully it's been beneficial. But yeah, I just leave you with the encouragement that no matter what situation you're in, no matter how overwhelming or anxiety-filled life might seem right now, there are simple ways to kind of streamline and make that easier and better. And we'd love to have you take part in the things we offer at Learn to Become. We have some great posts, some great podcasts to listen to based on topic or interest that you might have. And yeah, if you haven't been part of this free class that we teach, it really is. It's a lot of fun. We usually get, you know, several hundred people in a live class every time we teach it. And we're able to interact in the text chat and just involve you workshop style, going through four very simple steps, kind of a, it's a very simple uh, actions you can take to build a very simple framework around getting your current projects done, identifying them, getting them done easily and well so you're not stressed out about them anymore not procrastinating them so just grateful to have you with us at learn to become and hope this has been beneficial 